A Lesson Royal Narcissus, Part 38.11 In Part 10, I referenced that somebody else is in the background, but hasn't yet been forgotten about. And, of course, who is this person but no other than Piers Morgan? News.com.au reported, Meghan Markle will fight back against Piers Morgan's slurs, a royal biographer has claimed. Angela Levin says the Duchess of Sussex will hit back in the verbal boxing match after the former Good Morning Britain presenter's hour-long Fox News interview with Tucker Carlson. Morgan claimed Meghan and Harry lied or exaggerated 17 times during their bombshell Oprah Winfrey interview. He insisted he was right not to believe the Duchess of Sussex in her Oprah interview, alleging that 17 of her claims in the chat have proved incorrect. This, of course, is an assertion of control. I reported earlier on Piers Morgan's comments in the Tucker Carlson interview why he was doing as he did, and of course, this has come to the attention, as I expected, of Meghan Markle. And therefore, as a carefully paced piece of PR orchestrated by the PR machine to assert control, then comment has been made about fighting back. Now, again, understand that this is the PR machine that's doing the calculated aspect of this. And that Meghan's Markle, Meghan Markle's narcissism operates in an instinctive fashion. She may well have read about the interview, watched it, been told about it, and that would amount to a threat to her control. And she will undoubtedly have responded, he can't get away with this, I'm not going to let this happen, what can we do about it? And, in discussion with the PR team, the PR team will have suggested, as they do, let's get somebody to say on your behalf that you're going to fight back. Doesn't matter whether you actually will or not, but the point is, you need to make, have some kind of statement made on your behalf to demonstrate that you're not taking this lying down. So, a flunky, a mouthpiece, Gail King must be busy. So, Angela Levin is tasked with stating that Meghan Markle will fight back. Now, this is the assertion of control. It may also be future faking. Future faking is where a narcissist uses a future event for the purposes of asserting control in the now and will not deliver on that future event because there's no need to do so. As you know, narcissism requires control, fuel, character traits and residual benefits. And the provision of fuel and control is in the moment. The majority of narcissists, the unaware ones being lesser and mid-range, are not interested in control yesterday or control in six weeks' time. They're interested in control now. That is what their narcissism operates to govern them in relation to. And therefore, the necessity is to do something in the now. It might be punching somebody in the face. It might be insulting them. It might be bringing up something from the past to use in the now. It might be a word salad or a circular conversation. Or it might be promising to deliver something in the future which causes a reaction in the now. So a common example of future faking is, I can't wait to marry you, and then the narcissist never does. And the victim is bewildered. He always said that he wanted to marry me. Why didn't he do it? The reason being is, he had no need to. It was said by using a future event to control you in the now. I'll take you away on a wonderful holiday. No holiday ever manifests. Why? Because it doesn't need to because the narcissist got what he or she wanted, i.e. control and fuel, in that moment, because you responded, oh, I can't wait to go away on a holiday, that'll be lovely, thank you for ever so much, which signals that you're under control and you're provided fuel. The narcissist has got what is required. And because we are creatures of economy and efficiency, if we don't have to provide it, we won't. The instances where we do provide it means that at that later juncture, our narcissism dictated we needed to do it. So, at this point, Meghan Markle could future fake by saying, I will fight back. I'm going to sue his peasy ass. That enables her to assert control indirectly in the now by alluding to action that may be taken. Of course, she may well 
take legal action against Piers Morgan. Certain narcissists are notoriously litigious because, with access through money to expensive, ball-washing bastard lawyers, then, in those instances, the narcissist is able to assert control utilising lawyers. And much litigation that goes on and on and on involves one or more narcissists. Because most people who have emotional empathy don't go anywhere near the courts, not if they can help it. If it's two people with emotional empathy, they will resolve their differences because they can understand one another's point of view. They are able to see where they've gone wrong, they can put themselves in the shoes of the other person, and they make reparation. They don't need control over the other individual. They want to sort it out. But the narcissist becomes entrenched for the purposes of the assertion of control or nullifying a threat to control and becomes a serial litigant sometimes in person, and they are often seen as vexatious litigants who are lunatics, eccentric, but actually you're dealing with a narcissist, the individual who keeps bringing claim after claim after claim, can't afford lawyers, acts on their behalf, clogs up the legal system, launches unmeritorious appeals over and over again. And then there are those that have access to considerable wealth and formidable lawyers, and therefore are able to take action more formally. Of course, earlier this year, the Duchess of Sussex, as news.com.au continues to report, won a court battle against the Mail on Sunday publisher Associated New Papers, Newspapers Limited. Now, Ms. Levin, author of Harry, Conversations with the Prince, says Piers could have a similar lawsuit on his hands soon, as she believes Meghan will fight back. She told Talk Radio, I think it's a bit like a verbal boxing match. Each of them runs around and the other one comes back and is more spiteful or more difficult and says more things. They have one thing in common, and that is neither of them like to lose out. Well, she's accurate in what she's said there, but what she's actually paraphrasing, although unwittingly so, is both of them don't want to lose control, must deal with a threat to control by nullifying it, and assert control. Hence, it does appear like a boxing match. Megan says something, and therefore, as a consequence of that, there is a response which occurs from peers. Piers then comes back with his Tucker Carlson interview and makes various comments, which results in Meghan feeling her control unconsciously is threatened, precipitating a response from her. Ms. Levin continued. She con continued, so they'll carry on bashing away. And I imagine she has lawyers working out a sentence or verb or something that Piers said that they could jump on. She's a very determined woman. Heavily pregnant or not, she'll want to fight back. In the interview, Piers demanded Megan reveal who specifically rejected her pleas for help over her mental health before she quit as a frontline royal. He also accused Harry and Megan of complete hypocrisy with the interview and insisted he has the universal support of the British public. This, of course, is just a view that Megan will take action to sue Piers. Whether she actually does, it is not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed because she is able to assert control with the threat of legal action. Of course, if this comes across Piers Morgan's bows, this will threaten his control and he'll have to respond, probably by saying, bring it on if you dare, but if you do, I will be asking for disclosure of certain information as part of all of this, which will mean disclosure of information as to the state of knowledge that you had when you said the things that you did, and therefore in the circumstances... That proves to be a risky strategy because it could lead to certain gaps in the information, missing evidence being highlighted. And therefore, and again, this will not be Meghan Markle's decision making, but the guidance from PR team and lawyers that she's better off dangling the possibility of suing Piers Morgan over him. The threat. Mid-range narcissists love using threat. Easy to use, quick to use. And the power is in the maintenance of the threat, not its execution. Whether Meghan Markle sues Piers Morgan will depend upon the advice that she receives appertaining from the lawyers and also from PR. But at this juncture, the mere suggestion that she might take legal action against him is being done for the assertion of control to nullify the threat posed to the control as a consequence of Piers Morgan's allegations contained within the Tucker Carlson interview. This threat in itself will allow the assertion of control. It maintains the facade of reasonableness. 
it's easy to do. Either the narcissist issues the threat, or does so by proxy through a member of the coterie, as has been done here. The power, as I've explained in the threat, is not in its execution by the maintenance of its threat. And whether action is taken depends upon how Piers Morgan responds to this, and moreover, advice that's received. But if I was looking at it, I would be advising Meghan Markle to tread very carefully with regard to issuing legal proceedings against Piers Morgan. Piers is a pugilist. As you know, he's a narcissist and therefore his own desire for control means he's not going to readily back down. He's a man of means also, and he's not shy of bruising legal encounters. Indeed, he acquired the title of Teflon Morgan as a consequence of his ability to worm and squirm away from various con controversial actions of his, appearing relatively unscathed. He'd be well versed to threats of litigation, being involved in litigation, liaising with lawyers, and indeed is likely to relish the opportunity of a legal fight because his own lawyers would hit back with, with requests for certain disclosures and evidence. And that could very much backfire for Meghan Markle. He is not an opponent that one would sensibly choose to litigate against in these circumstances. And therefore, it may well just be the case that it is the usual use of threat that is utilised to assert control. But, as Miss Levin has pointed out, the verbal boxing match has taken place and it will continue between these two individuals. Because, after firing this shot across Piers Bowers in order to try and assert control over him, you can expect a response from him. Please ensure that you subscribe to my channel to receive further updates about this and other aspects of narcissism. Like the video so that it becomes more prominent and share it widely to ensure that other people understand more about narcissism in this entertaining and revealing series. Thank you for doing so. I'm H.G. Tudor and there will be doubtless more to come.